What's up game developers? We are going to build the ultimate event system for Unity. And you know what is the best part? It's not going to be that complicated. And it will improve your life by roughly 42,000%. I mean, not complicated. The learning curve is a bit like this. There's a little bump in the middle, but other than that, it's pretty much beginner friendly. So let's dive right into it. Here's a situation that will certainly sound familiar. You have many game objects, many small scripts on those game objects, or multiple scripts on the same object, and also some user interface. Now, you need one script to talk to another script, like the health of the player and the health interface, the task of the quest and the NPC waiting for the quest to finish, the door that gets unlocked by a console 20 meters away and it goes on and on. An easy way to visualize the problem is to think in independent systems. You have multiple systems that should not know about each other but need to share information. Like the health of the player tracking the actual numbers should know nothing about how to display the health. That's the job of the user interface. What do you do? References? Mm -mm. Because otherwise they know about each other, so that defeats the purpose. You could use Unity events, but where do you put the event? On this part? Or on this part? Either way, it's again that one side needs to know about the other side. The same with delegates, it's just that it is linked with code. No, 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 no. nothing of that. We need a new piece that will be in between and will act as a radio. Everybody knows how the radio works. The stations broadcast the show round and cars or other receivers listen to it. The station does not know who listens and the cars also don't really know where the signal comes from. It just arrives through the sky. This is exactly what we want to recreate in Unity. By the way, everything I'm about to show you is based on this epic Thanks, Ryan. Links are in the description. I will also put the link to the code that we are going to write right now. We only need two scripts. One is a mono behavior and one is a scriptable object. If you don't know what is a scriptable object, don't worry, I'll make a more detailed video later on. For now, just know that it's a class to save data and store that as an asset in your Unity project. It's really awesome. Let's call the first script game event listener and the second one game event. In game event, replace mono behavior with scriptable object and remove all the content. At this line before, create asset menu, menu name, game event. This will allow us to right click and create new game event assets. This game event acts as a channel or radio station. It will store the list of objects that are listening, in this case, game event listener. Then we will have different methods to broadcast and raise events. And we need to manage that list by providing also two methods, one to register and want to unregister. It's like tuning in and out of the radio. Here we simply check if this listener is not known, then we add it, so we don't want duplicates. And to unregister, we first check if we know that listener before removing it. Let's head to the game event listener. It's a mono behavior, but we don't need the start and the update method. We need to know which game event or radio station we want to listen to. Then when this object is enabled, we will tune in to the radio. So game event, register, listener, and we pass ourselves so this. On disable, we do the opposite. Now here's a super cool part. Let's import unity event.events and add a new public unity event response. Unity events allow you to link method calls directly in the editor. You will see it in action in a moment. Before we jump back into the game event, let's add the last method here. Public void on event raised and then response.invoke. This will be called by the game event when an event is broadcasted. Just bear with me because it's going to become very clear once you see it in action. In game event, we add a method called race, where we loop over all listeners and call the on event raised method. Save all your scripts and let's go into Unity. I'll create a new folder called data and another one called events. Right click and look what we have here, game event. Give it a name like player health changed. That's one radio station or channel. Now, how convenient is this? I have a player health script and a player health text. The player health script is simply removing one health every second to simulate some kind of debuff. And 
the player health text does not do much because it's stupid, it doesn't know what to show. All right, the player health will broadcast when the health changes. This means that it needs a game event. When the health changes, we call race. Now drag and drop the game event into the reference and that part is done. Everything works the same way, even if no one is listening. And now everyone who wants to listen to this, like the health text, simply needs a game event listener. Drag the game event, then add a new event, link the health text script and choose the method you want to call. I've written a public method update text for example. Run the code and the health reduces every second, sends out the event and the health text reacts via the game event listener. All right, first part is done. What? There are more parts? Chill, chill. We need to modify the code so that we can also pass parameters along the way. Because right now the health text has really no idea what to show. So we need to give it that information. The problem is here, a unity event is too simple. We will define a custom unity event just above. So this new class inherits from unity event and will be able to pass a component and an object. We put component and not mono behavior because it's even more general like that. We set it as system serializable, otherwise we can't see it in the inspector. Let's now change the rest to support our new parameters. On event raised gets component sender and object data. We pass those in the invoke. And the same with the method race in game event. Okay, now when you call race in player health, you can pass this and the new health number. And on the listener, we can also add component and object as parameters to the public methods that we will use. Now the health text can be like, hey, who the hell called me? I only want health scripts. Oh, this is some kind of player health, that's fine. I will do something with your value. That sender parameter is giving you extra flexibility because sometimes you might need to know who called the event or you might need more information. It's just super flexible. Later, you can even modify the parameters, create your own container class and so on. Here is just the base to get started. Still with me? All fine? How about a small recap, maybe? So we created a game event, which acts as a radio station. You can create any number of game event. For my games, I have, for example, on player jump, on player land, on player hurt, on player death, on level start, on level end. Every object that wants to send events needs a reference to some game event. In your code, you call raise to, well, raise an event. Anyone who wants to listen to an event gets a game event listener, drags a game event and links some methods. You can also have multiple game event listeners on one game object, that's totally normal. <sighs> All right, make sure to check in the description for the link to the original talk, it's super interesting. Those are the two scripts that I drag into every new project. It really forever changed how I work with Unity. Once you use it a bit, you will see that suddenly you will be able to create independent systems that work together, but never know about each other, which is really awesome. If that's not development happiness, I don't know what is. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you very much for watching. I would love to hear what you think from those who are starting out with Unity, especially in terms of how's the difficulty of such content. This is something I would have loved to have known sooner when I started out with Unity because it just makes everything so much easier, so much cleaner. And as I said, it's, it allows you to create independent systems. So your, your complex games is much easier to, to work with and to split into smaller parts that work together without being dependent on each other, which is really huge. And that's it for this video. Now go work on your game and I will see you next time.